<laughs> is the button is the yes. thing spinning? Yeah. Okay. We're good. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's already been a busy morning. I had blood work this morning. You got blood work tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully everything will turn out for both of us. Yeah, right. Mine's physical. Is that what yours is for? Well, my, uh, well oh, yeah, you're my annual. annual. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then if I don't like the blood work, I'm going to have it taken again before I go to the cardiologist. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like some high schoolers taking the SAT. <laughs> My results will do it again. Do it again. I, I always thought when, when I took it, I thought you got one shot at it. I didn't know you could do it multiple yeah. times. Well, we are the Sunday after Easter. Second yeah. Sunday in Easter. The second Sunday in Easter, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to keep track of how they name these things. Yeah. Um, traditional texts, in some regards, the the gospel text is always right. Thomas. Uh, the other ones move around, but um, yeah, we like to pick on Thomas. Gives, gives yeah, us a good, I know. Gives us a good feel. Well, well, and the thing is, is that the the what he is called is not actually in the text. I know. Yeah, and and the epistle text fits very well. I don't know if you watched both videos, but they they made a point of fitting both of those together. Well, I, I like I like the blessing that we get out of the dialogue with Thomas. Oh. Yeah. You mean what, Think Je about it. what Jesus says? Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Well, uh, and right. well, there are some other points in there that I that they I mentioned that I never saw before, and it, 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 they were some great points. And and basically what they said, you don't even need to get to the Thomas section. You could just do the first part and do it that way. Yeah. Okay. So... So we are, um, we're going to do the psalm, then the gospel, then the epistle, then the first reading. We don't have an Old Testament reading during these Sundays of Easter. Um, we always do Acts. So we do the Acts text. Yeah. You want to start with prayer or you want me to? Uh, I'll go. Okay. Lord, we come together with... We give you thanks and praise, Lord, for this opportunity to be together at this place. So as we go over your word, may your spirit work through us, Lord, that what you would have us say is heard, and your word accomplishes your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm 148. Oh, I wonder who's going to read it. <laughs> Any volunteers? <laughs> <laughs> that means that means you. Well, the the epistle text looks like it's a longer reading than what it really is, though. Oh yeah, well, no. <laughs> I don't think any of the texts are long this morning, actually. Well, no. Well, the John text is a little lengthy. Yeah, but, verses, yeah. So, so All right. would you like to read it, Jack? <laughs> I, think, I think I'll volunteer. <laughs> My favorite. Books of the Bible. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the high heights. In the heights, excuse me. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun, moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded, and they were created. And he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all the peoples, princes and all the rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is exalted, his majesty above the earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his saints, for the people of, his, of Israel who are near to him, praise the Lord. Who's exempt? 
who or, I should say who or what is exempt from praising the Lord? Not even the demons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's everybody, that, right? right? That's that's the beauty of it. He starts from the heavens and works his way down. Right. Um, yeah. So it's, it's it's including everything, whether it's uh, a living being or whether it is a cre a created thing. Um, they're all included in praising the Lord, <clears throat> and they're going to praise Him. Well, whether they want to or not. Well, they do. I mean, that's that's how they're. That's what creation is, right? Well, creation does, but sometimes, sometimes we don't. Well, sometimes we we do a poor job of praising him. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I mean, when I was reading this, I was even thinking of you know, Pharaoh did right. God's will, right? Pontius, right? Pi Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate, Judas, yes. Right? They were all created and did what God created them to do. Yep. Right? I mean, not that he manipulated them, though, because some people want to go in that direction. No. Now he foreknew what they would do. Right. So he just put them in play. Yep. Right? Um, maybe he knew I was going to do this, so he put me in play. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I'm trying to think of a way to respond to that. <laughs> Maybe because you're, you're, I mean, you're right. You're right. You I know, mean, we we do the yeah. will of God. Right? right. Right. How often I I chose not to want to become a pastor. There you go. I mean, I mean, all the time in Lakeland, John Berkey was one who constantly came, came up to me and said, "You you really need to consider being a pastor." Um, it was like no, I I, I like working with kids, yeah. uh, and, and 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 I've told the story. I didn't know if I could work with older people, and God in His infinite wisdom and His sense of humor puts me in a congregation with older people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you're right. I mean, we we are where we are to be. Right. We are doing now. It's old. We are older children. There you go. <laughs> what you didn't like? You didn't like being called an old man. It's called rangers. Oh, there you go. Uh, you're missing something. I'm not. <laughs> no, I mean think about it. You know, God created everything, and everything in its place does what God created it for. Right. Right. I mean, it says in verse eight at the end of verse eight. Fulfilling his word, right? Fire, hail, snow, mist, stormy wind, sea creatures, and all the deeps. Yeah. Fulfilling his word. And then you get to the meat in 13 and 14 of what the praise is to do. So we, we get this litany of who does the praise. And then at the end, it's what is the praise for? What is the praise to do? Or, or more specifically, who gets the praise? Right. Not the creation. Right. Right? And, and we live in a culture where we desire praise. That, that's, that's the backwardness of our sinful being. I appreciate you. And I really do. <laughs> I really do. But I mean, but don't we... Lift one another up in the spirit of the Lord. But but when yeah. we, when we do that, when we, when you when you give me praise, mm -hmm. who are you really giving praise to? I'm thanking the Lord that you're in my life. Correct. Right. But when we seek that praise, that's different. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. When we want to be the center, I noticed that you didn't give me any appreciation. Oh. <laughs> Here comes the lightning. Lord, take care of him. <laughs> but you're right. When we seek it, there's a problem. Right. But when we give it, we're sharing what the Lord has given to us. Right. So, you know, it, and, and, and again, there have been times where somebody has praised me for a sermon I preach. I go, that's not on me. It, right. really, it really is not on me. I mean, I, I was I was taken aback by that one sentence in last Sunday's sermon. 
that uh, the story is not over at the tomb. No. And, and, and the, the revelation of that sentence, the two-way revelation, it's not over there at the tomb. Quit focusing on the tomb, right. and it's not over. It hasn't ended. At the tomb. I, I mean, that, 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 I was so intrigued by that phrase. I was so excited to preach it right. because I knew that <laughs> it, it went beyond me. When we read the Word, and when we reread the Word, or reread it again, it still comes up with more meaning, a deeper meaning. Oh, yeah. Or it gets more revealed than what was just in the first reading. Uh, because we're on round two since COVID of these readings. Right, there you go again. <laughs> we're on round two of these readings on COVID. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, 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 and oh, we, we're not sharing any new insights. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you why, because when I, I, I did find all my old lessons. So I bring them up and then I redo the lesson, review the old lesson the way it was two, what, three years ago now? Yeah. Yeah. And then go back to the new videos or the new commentaries that I'm researching with and then it gets deeper and deeper. Right. Well, I didn't see this before. It's right. a revelation to me to go back and study it again. Right. You know, and hopefully we get to share that. Well, and the one thing I don't do, and maybe I should do, well, since I'm retiring, I don't have to really worry about this anymore. I, I never, I, I never go back to see, okay, what did I, which text did I preach three years ago? Oh, okay. All right. You know, typically it might be an aid or it may be a hindrance. Well, it's, right, right. Typically what I do is I read through all the texts and I go, which of these texts do we need to hear? Because it's the present time. Correct. And, and that's Correct. where I go in to get the videos now or the other commentaries. Right, because three years ago when we were in the midst of COVID, oh, was, we, we were in a whole different place. Yeah. yeah. So, so, it, so it has a whole different meaning for us. Right. Uh, and, and, and again, moving forward with our congregation, getting ready to transition to another pastor, you know, that that's a whole different aspect to look at these texts. Well, three years ago, how easy or how difficult was it to give praise and thanks to the Lord? Nobody was giving, I should say nobody. Uh, well, it, but it was very difficult for people. You yeah. you you heard very little praise. Right. It was, it was more a prayer for help, help and help. Right. You know, I'm going to praise you, Lord, but we need your help. We need your guidance. And, 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 and to emphasize 13 with what you're just saying is, no matter the circumstance, his name will be exalted. Look at the cross. Look at the cross. No matter the circumstance, his name will be exalted. Right. We may not see it in the moment. No. But in the moment, that's... That's really the time we need to be praising even more is in that moment where we don't see it. Because we're, we're guaranteed, you know, for his name alone is exalted. Uh, is is in, is in that sense of it's happening right now. It's going to it keep is, happening. It's going to keep it's happening. Keep happening. It's, it's, yeah. It's, so, so even in the midst of our worst time, his name is exalted. And wasn't it um, three years ago? Right. So, I mean, in a sense, we were praising him by going to him and, 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 and praying for guidance and, and relief, mm -hmm. you know, and his peace. So, is, in a sense, that is praising him. But today, the praise that we give is a different sense, a different type of praise. We're giving thanks and rejoicing that that's over behind us and we are healthy. Keep that in mind with the upcoming... Uh... Never mind, we're not talking <laughs> politics. I'm just saying. I almost uh, dropped my cross today. <laughs> You're going to bring in politics. I'm going to bring in a little blue there you cross. Go. <laughs> well, you got to bring you got to bring up the politics because of verse 14. Well, yeah. Right. He has a he has raised a horn for his people. And, and what does that mean? It doesn't mean uh, he, he's he's Louis, Louis Armstrong. Blowing his horn. No. And it doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean I'm standing up selling the Bibles either. Oh golly. Don't even go there. Next subject. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I was gonna ask some of the pastors if they were getting new Q Bibles or not. Oh my god. <laughs> but I, 
I just, but what, you know, I'm I, sure you've done that we work we, on, we, on the Lord. Yeah, it, it's it's Christ. It's all it's all about. But but what is, but what is but, the horn? But the horn of salvation, number one, the horn of taking us into battle, the the horn of victory, right? The horn calling to worship. I mean, it's it's so it, many. It's a sense of it's a sense of it's power. Everything. It's a sense of power. Yeah. You know, he he raises up a horn for his people. He raises up that power and you already said it it's in the cross of jesus christ right. that's the ultimate power that we have that's what we celebrated last sunday that's what we can that's why these are sundays in easter i almost said it too so <laughs> don't worry yeah sundays in easter we're still something even though we don't sing the easter hymns we're still focused on the easter event right and and how that because again it, the story doesn't end at the tomb. It, it continues on. He goes on ahead of you. And I tried so hard to fit that into my sermon this Sunday, and I couldn't. Uh, see, see if I can throw it in. But, uh, but I, I really think that's the sense is he's going ahead of you. Um, and, and, and we need to keep that in mind, that he is going ahead of us in all these things of our congregation that we might be worried about, that he is going ahead of us. He's waiting for us to join him in that. Anything else? Yeah, when you said that you don't have to be concerned with what you preached three years ago. Of course, you always get this from me. Our retired pastor friends have to say never say never. Right. Right. You never know what tomorrow's going to bring. Uh, they didn't either. And, <laughs> and as much as we love to have it happen, change does change things. <laughs> yep. and, and you know Lutherans love change, right? Oh yeah. You know, the old joke: How many Lutherans does it take to change light bulb? What change, change. The light bulb? Oh, we have to form a committee first, <laughs> right? Yeah. And it'll take three years to change it. In John chapter twenty. <laughs> Let's move on. John chapter twenty. I got a few notes on this. Yeah, me too. We've been I got a whole well. Page. We do it every. every I got year. a whole page. On we <laughs> we do it every year. So uh, why is not why? Yeah. I mean, I keep adding notes on the evening of that day. Which day? The that first day, day of the week. Yeah. Are you going to read this tomorrow? Uh, am no, I going to read this? I was just, I was okay. just giving you a little lead. Okay. <laughs> I know it gives me good practice for Sunday when I have to read it. Yeah, there you go. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. They said to them again, Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. A lot of a lot of stuff. Yes, you you already made this. This is Easter Sunday evening. Yes. 
Easter Sunday evening, the first, the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked. I found it interesting the second time the doors were still locked. Even though they had seen Jesus, they still were in a locked room. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I wish, I wish, I've never heard anybody try to treat that before. Well, uh, but 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 it's in, it, it, is it is it so that Thomas could have the same experience, or were they still still fearful of the Jews? I would think it, it's still it's eight days later. There's still chaos and confusion all around them. Yeah, but they'd seen Jesus. But okay, and Jesus said, "Peace be with you." Are you saved? Yes. Do you live in the peace of the Lord? Yes. Do you lock your house doors at night? True. Right? We still have evil in the world. Yeah, but they weren't asleep. <laughs> they weren't asleep. They weren't asleep. <laughs> I'm just saying, but we still, you know, when you drive down the road, doesn't it give you peace of mind that you know your, your door locks on your car automatically lock when you get to a speed or put it in drive? You don't have to worry about somebody come up and grabbing your door. Well, I've got a story on that one. I had that that's really good. Huh? I had that happen to me. I went through to go pick her up. And I drove through this neighborhood and I had to make a stop thing. Next thing I know, my door girl. It's Thankfully, a young lady told me to leave them alone. We had it happen. My family had it happen. Luckily, my dad had told us to lock the doors about two minutes before it happened. We were driving from the Orange Bowl parade and went through Liberty City. Oh. <laughs> and when that happened, I said, Dad, just hit the gas. Yeah. Or you could do like a crazy thing like I did with her in the car. Pull over to Liberty City and ask directions. <laughs> did you you didn't. You remember that? I remember being she's, here. She's, so she's burnt it out of her brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, 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 and again, and again, this fits back in, into the, uh, although this is John's gospel, this fits back into you know last Sunday's gospel where where Mark Mark ends it is there's still there's still a lot of uncertainty there. There's still he, he, even though you know if you put all the stories together. The, the women have told them to go on ahead. Jesus is going to meet you there. And, and he does. This is the meeting them there. Right. Um, there's still so much uncertain. You know, it's, it's, that, it's that whole, you know, Missouri, Missourian complex. We got to be shown something. And, and, and Jesus addresses that. Uh, and, and, I, and I think, I think sometimes in our faith today, um, you know, well, in fact, I even had a pastor tell that to me one time is, you know, I'll believe it when, when you show me. Right. I'll believe it when I see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we could put that in politics today. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I, I go back to, you know, Thomas, right? Maybe Thomas is the one to lock the doors because he hadn't seen Jesus yet. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, you know. Like I said, I mean, maybe he did. But, but to have that same experience as the disciples, had of Jesus coming. Just imagine somebody coming through the walls. <laughs> Beat me up, Scotty. Oh, no. Uh, or well, the new show, uh, Ghost, where they just walk through the wall. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but go ahead. to get back to this, okay, I, you know, I'm thankful for this text. Not, and, and, and Thomas does get a bad rap. He's no different than any of us. Right. If I don't see it, I'm not going to believe it. You, you're telling me hocus pocus stuff here. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The the disciples were still behind locked doors, and they had seen it. Yeah. So yeah. actually, actually, the disciples are worse off because they had already seen them, and they they're behind locked doors still. Right. But Thomas is no that. worse than what the disciples were the first time. No, he's not. Because they weren't believing it either. No. He showed them. Right. He says, look at me, see me. So Thomas. Is no worse. Yeah. No. It's the same day, just later. No, no, no. It's eight. It's a yeah. days later. It's eight days later. So, so the whole it's right. the following I'm Sunday. About their mind. It's, yeah. the, it's the following Sunday now. Yeah. So they've had a week to contemplate with this. Right. 
you know. And, Tom, and, and they are commissioned and told what to do. Yeah. And Thomas missed out on the whole thing. The video pointed that out. Know. Right? Did, 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 is Tom, is I Thomas mean, missing the Holy Spirit? <laughs> well, until maybe. Pentecost, maybe. We don't know. Because it doesn't say that he breathed on Thomas and said, receive, and this is no, what you're going to no, do. No, no, no. Thomas did have the Holy Spirit. I know he had the Holy Spirit. Because There's no said, way. My Lord, my God. Hey, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> he could yeah. not say that if he didn't have the Holy Spirit. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, in that sense, that confession. Yeah. Thomas is confession. You know? So, actually, actually, he... he 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 is exhibiting the Holy Spirit more than the disciples were exhibiting the Holy Spirit. At least he made a confession. He made a confession. They went behind locked doors again. Yeah. Right. You know, right. But, you know, blessed are those who believe that haven't seen. You know, I mean, out of that text, that's us, right? That that's you and I. Yeah. And you know. And, the, and his blessing, peace be with us. You know, I mean, we have to go back and look at this text and say, all right, thank you, Thomas, for, for that, that doubting. Or actually, in this case, for that unbelief, it's, it's unfaithfulness. Okay, it's, we, we, it's, unbel it's just, yeah, the, the two letters. terms, but, in verse 27, in verse 27, where the ESV says, do not disbelieve, but believe. It's be disbelieve is a pistos and believe is pistos it's so so it's it's not unbelief and belief do not unbelieve but believe right faith, don't be faithless but be faithful okay because believing is faith and unbelief is faithless uh, uh, to me faithless still means you might have a little bit i i think jesus is saying don't don't go the way of having no faith. You know, right. that that's why that's why I would choose to to translate it. Un, do not unbelieve. Yeah, because but believe. in our language we could be less but not completely empty. Correct. Uh, Correct. And again, let's get back to the Greek and the Hebrew, and it's boom. You know, right? We don't under you know, and, and that's why I read like three different. <laughs> translations and then get back to the Greek when I can or the Hebrew right. because without that you don't get the emphatic meaning of of what this is about and you're mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. it's it's nothing it's it's emptiness well so, and 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 the and and I, I think they alluded to this I don't think they said it directly but that first half from 19 to 23 Jesus is establishing the rhythm of what we do in worship yes you know, he comes to us, and we we start with peace. We start with receiving the Holy Spirit when we remember our baptism. You know, he, he's 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 establishing the rhythm of our worship, and oh yeah, and then he's commanding uh, the the forgiveness of sins. You know, do, doing those things. So, so you know, I, again, he's he's establishing for the disciples. This is how you do church. Well, in, in the first four verses, you got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. And that's how we start, right? Right. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy right. Spirit. Right. Right. So, I mean, it's 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 me, it's that call to worship. Mm -hmm. And who are we worshiping? Who are we giving praise to? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But God Almighty. Mm -hmm. you know? And then he charges us, as he's charged them, you know, forgive the sins. Right? Right. And, and if they're not, if you don't, then you're held. But the point is, go back and put that to the Lord's Prayer. Right. Okay? There's a different definition, because people are going to put the two together and say they conflict. Mm -hmm. They absolutely do not. Mm -hmm. Okay? Whose sins would you not forget? The ones who refuse to repent. They've brought that upon themselves. And... That's called the what excommunication in a sense. Right. We've forgiven them, but we're casting them out because we want them to turn about and come back. Correct. Okay. In the Lord's Prayer, it's personal. It's personal. It's holding me accountable. 
And, 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 and you bring up a good point. It says to withhold forgiveness. That doesn't mean not to forgive them. Exactly. We want to forgive we them. We want to forgive them. We withhold it. Until they turn about. So, so that they are forced to recognize, I'm a sinner. I need, I need help outside of me. See, people want to take this and, 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 and put it in conflict, and it's not. Right. It's, it's in the full rhythm. You know, you have, we have to let the word define the word, as we say. Right. Don't, don't just so well that interpret the word. The word interprets the word. word. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 All right. So, so yeah. Uh, so, uh, and, and again, as people are wont to do, and I know you watch the video, so you know you have the, did Thomas actually touch Jesus? We don't know. And I didn't know that I didn't need the video for that one. Okay. Because when you read the scripture. I've preached it before. Well, I, I, I've preached that we don't know. It, it's We don't. I mean, it doesn't say he did. It doesn't say he didn't. He, I would, did I, he follow the Lord's instruction? Do this? Or did he just say, my Lord, my God, and, you know, did he fall on his face, on his knees? Did he stand there? We don't know. And he just asked him, do you believe because you've seen me? Right. Right. Not because, Not because you touched. And, and the thing I wrote here, and this was one of my new insights for this text today, um, because it fits with 30 and 31. Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Just to put a twist on that, blessed are those who have heard and yet have believed. Okay. And, and that's why that's why I could be leaning toward Thomas didn't touch him because he it, it wasn't because he had seen him. It wasn't because he had touched him. It was because he heard. Because he had seen. Yeah. Be, because okay. because I'm playing with the next one. You know, he did many other signs which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe. Well, they're written, so so why? Why for our hearing? For our for our benefit. For our hearing. So yes. so faith is in the matter of the hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Oh, hmm. Hearing by the word I, of God. I think that's a scripture verse somewhere. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> by the grace of God. No, by the word of God. Yeah. And, and 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 again, that the whole idea is that by believing you may have life in his name. It's not just a matter of knowing who he is. It's that whole life that you get because you know who he is. Well, it's, it's knowledge and wisdom. Right. The application. Of, of right. Understanding. And some Lutherans just stop at the knowledge. Yeah, that's, I've got my catechism memorized. Yeah. That works. Yeah. All right. Moving on. What do we got? First John? First John. Right. Not the Gospel of John. The letter of John. The first letter of John. Not the last book that John wrote called Revelation. Um, it's First, it's uh, page one thousand three hundred and one in my Bible. <laughs> I got a kick out of that when they did that on Wednesday Bible class. Oh. What page is that on? <laughs> well, let me check the volume of translations I have in front of me to see which page it is. Well, a lot of them took the pew Bibles. No. So they all had the same Bible. <laughs> First John 1, 1 to 2, 2. Yeah, we're ready. Okay. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testified to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was the Father, which was with the Father, and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus the Christ. Excuse me, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may com your, that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we all have if we say we have fellowship with him while we walk, walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, 
cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteousness, the righteous. He is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. You got propitiation right. I did get that one right. <laughs> I have a hard time saying Jesus Christ without saying Jesus the Christ. I read that Jesus Christ, but in my mind, Jesus the Christ. I mean, it's not like it's his name. It's who he is. Right. But in the Greek, there is no there you know, is no there is no no article there. Yeah. But sometimes sometimes it. You can, in the Greek language, you can carry an article even though an article is not expressed. You can do that. Uh, so it would not be incorrect. I mean, uh, so when, so then do you say when when because Paul Paul changes them around. Sometimes he says Jesus Christ. Sometimes he says Christ Jesus. Christ. So would you say the Christ Jesus? <laughs> If you're, Christ, Jesus. If, if you're going to stick to the way you do it, it's you, the Christ. You'd have to do the Christ, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> uh, well, and, 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 and again, you hear John's use of his gospel at the beginning of this. I mean, he is our advocate. Well, no, well, that which was from the beginning. You hear right. the echoes of John's gospel. Um, and then you get the connection to the Thomas story, that which we have heard, we have seen, right. we have looked upon, we have touched. And, and, and it, made, it made me think of a couple Sundays ago that I said that, that Jesus is multi-sensory. Okay. I don't remember you saying that. But it, was, it was at the very beginning in my opening of one of my sermons in the last three weeks or so. I, I said that he's a multi-sensory Jesus. Was that then in Gainesville? <laughs> no, no, that was, was here. That was here. That was here. <laughs> I missed it. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. He's a multi-sensory Jesus, because e even today, you know, not only when he was there with them, even today he's a multi-sensory Jesus. Do we hear him? Do we see him? In a sense, yes. Do we touch him? Yeah. Do we taste him? Yeah. There you go. And it might have been Monday Thursday. I might have said it on Monday Thursday. Okay. Um, because that, that's really the sense of it. He's a, he's a multi-sensory, because again, we see him not necessarily in his physical form, but he's, we see him through one another. You know, uh, and that fits into the Acts text. Yes. I'll, I'll just, I'll yes, just, I'll just let you know, yeah. you know. We see Jesus today through one another. And if we don't see Jesus through one another, shame on us. So, so we get this, this Jesus that has, and it, and it says, who was made manifest to us. So that we see him, that, that we hear him, we touch him, we taste him. Uh, we, we get this multi-sensory experience of Jesus. Um, and we don't have to be one of those spiritualistic churches to have this great uh, cosmic feeling. We don't have to have a cosmic feeling of Jesus. We get to have that multi-sensory Jesus just in what we do. Oh, uh, where, where you're healed, you tap your head, and you just fall over. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> the the book I'm doing for the next book study, he talks about that. Oh, does he? Right, because it, it, one at a time. He said. He said. Notice. Jesus didn't deal with those who needed to be healed by smacking them on the forehead. <laughs> what did he do? He embraced them. He embraced them. He embraced them. He, he touched them. He made a butt pie, put it under his eyes. And right. He, he, he didn't smack them. He, he embraced them. He, 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 he lingered with his touch. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if we say we have 
not saying we make him a liar and the word is not in us. You know, we know that we're sinners. And we confess that every The world Sunday. does it. Oh no, the world thinks that everything's PTT. That, you know, and, they and do whatever I, they want to do. And I alluded to that one former Missouri Senate woman who's a, an evangelist now that says that she doesn't believe in the I a poor miserable sinner. Mm, that's, yeah, I remember you bringing that up before. Yeah, I mean, what are you? <laughs> I mean, you're an enemy with God, and that's the one we, that's our sinful nature. And we don't, and, and that's the reality of it is, we don't like those words, you know, in, in our culture today. And, you know, God loves you as you are. <laughs> he does. Uh, he loves me in spite of myself. Right. And that's really, you know, it's it's not keep on keep on doing that sinful behavior no. because Jesus loves you anyway. No. Jesus, as you said, Jesus loves you in spite of you. <laughs> I mean, You're not very lovable. I'm not very lovable. And sometimes we, we show it to one another. <laughs> I'm waiting for a heat from work we eat with you. <laughs> I saw that on camera. I was on camera so. Too bad, Jack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, what we think about, you know, the things we do, with, you know, and, and how many times I've stopped myself from carrying my thought through, you know, physically. But in my mind, I've thought it all the way through. And see the joy of that retaliation in my mind. That's still sin. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's still sin. Just because I didn't do it. No, you did it. No, you did it. <laughs> right? In your head, you did it. So I, you did it. <laughs> I did it. I mean, you know. Uh, well, and, 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 and again, you know, this because we know we are this way, we, you know, again, it says, you know, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive. He is, God is faithful and just to forgive. My forgiveness doesn't have to come from you. Now, grant, granted, as we live as brothers in Christ, hopefully you will do that. Okay, but get this now. Be because you know what? It's no longer you who live the Christ of the Okay. I had to. I'll bring it next. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. God is faithful and just, and he will forgive me my sins, okay? Now, so he forgives me, mm -hmm. but as a sinner, as a child of God, I'm supposed to forgive him as well. Forgive God? You. Oh, thank you. My finger. <laughs> my finger. <laughs> so I'm supposed to forgive you, but if I, right. don't, but if I don't forgive you your sin, then what happens with, with God forgiving me my sin? He still forgives me my sin because he is faithful. I'm not. Correct. But at the same time... He is true he, to his word. Right, but at the same time, we also have... You, you said scripture interprets scripture. Right. You also have scripture that says that we who are believers are, are held up to a higher standard. Uh, it would be better for you to have a millstone be hung around your neck and be dropped and cast into right. the sea than to lead one of these little ones astray. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go with that one. It's difficult. It's difficult. Right. Well, and, 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 and again, th this is sort of where, where my, my sermon ended last Sunday. I, I mean, I, I was taken back by getting that text. Uh, he sent it late late Saturday night and, and wake up to that text from this former student out of the blue, out of the blue. Uh, I finally had to look at the yearbooks. Uh, he, he was in my last class uh, at Fort Myers. Um, so you were supposed to be where you were supposed to be. You were there until you felt God's call. Right, but, but it really to me emphasizes verse four, and we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Our joy is complete when we see others being brought to faith. So the, these these things we are right we are writing these we things. We see that joy. We yes. we are writing these things 
in order for our joy, because our joy to be complete means we, we don't stop with us. No. We don't stop with me, myself. You know, be, 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 because because I, I'm saved, it doesn't stop there. But how, how many believers think, okay, I've got my fire insurance, and so I can sit in the pew and do nothing. No. That's the, that was the whole sense of last Sunday's sermon is he goes ahead of you. That means you keep going. Well, and, I've got and, my... and that's where our joy gets complete. You could, you've even mentioned this. Don't you receive a certain amount of joy when you see somebody else be in the presence of Jesus or experience the presence of Jesus in their life? It makes your joy complete. It does. It does. It, I mean, yeah. When I see others coming into church, you know, the, I was not instrumental in by any means, but I was part of the Lord's work. You were a tool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was a tool used by the Lord, all right, chiseling away. There you go. There you go. There you, go. Uh, you know, it, it, it does give you joy. But do I need to see that result to have joy? No. Because my joy is just knowing that, yes, I am saved and the Lord is doing his work regardless of whether I see it or if it's done my way or not. He's accomplishing what he will accomplish. But if you do it, you will see it. Sometimes. You, you might not see it in every case, but if you are constantly, it's the, you're, you're gonna it's, see the it. it's the sower casting a seed. You're not gonna see the fruits of all the labor, but you're, you are going, you know, there, there, for example, the, the text that I got, you know, I would, I, there was another student, same experience, same, same down in Fort Myers, he was in a different class, same experience. He could have been the one that, that had written that one, but he chose to write that one right. on Sunday. And it's just like, yeah. you know, thank you, Lord, for that gift for something, me. Yeah, something. That, that you, you spend that time one-on-one -on -one with somebody that you know that Jesus, Jesus used you as a tool, or I use instrument, you always use tool. Uh, he used us as an instrument to bring somebody to faith and to know something, you know, again, that dates it, something like Jesus Christ Superstar <laughs> to bring somebody to faith and, and that they're still in that faith 40 years later. Yeah. You know why I use tool instead of instrument. Right, you're better at it than I am. No, an instrument is, is something to use to make it refined and perfect. A tool is like a chisel or a hammer. It's kind of rough and, and coarse. So my work is kind of rough and coarse. Your your work or your person? Yes, that too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more refined. I'm an instrument. No. You're more <laughs> rough and coarse. You're a tool. Uh, uh, <laughs> or like a bull in a china shop. There we go. Uh, <laughs> we good. We good on this one. Yeah, Let's get to the gospel. No, get to the first reading which is the sermon text. Oh, okay. Um, Acts. Acts 4, 32 to 35. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Yes. This is not an easy text. No, but you gotta... And... and, and, and Part of what makes it, it, it can be very easy to just spiritualize this. And there, there definitely is a spiritual, it's not all physical, earthly. You, you can go in that direction too. You can go strictly earthly and spiritual, go in that direction uh, where, where people go, yeah, but isn't this communism? Well, <laughs> and, 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 and it's like, don't, don't, don't swing the pendulum that far. But they, 
the opposite thing is don't don't send it swing it to where it's only spiritual. Right. You no. got you got to you got to maintain these two things in tension. It's the reality of realizing that number one. I'm just reading that first verse. There. All right. No one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own. Okay. I have nothing that's my own. Okay. Everything belongs to the Lord. Now he's given me a trust to take care of it. Okay. All right. Uh, the, you know, here's one denarii, here's five denarii, here's ten denarii. You know, go do something with it, right? Mm -hmm. All right. What do you do with it? Okay. Well, the fact here is that they realized that everything that they say belonged to them didn't belong to them. It belonged to the Lord. Okay. And they had all these things in common because whatever you have, whatever I have is not ours, it's the Lord's. So that in common, that fact is, that's a responsibility that the, that the Lord has given me something to have to use for others, not for my own selfish desires. Okay, so that's what I get out of that one. You know, so in a sense, communism perfect. In other words, it's not anybody's, it's not the government, it's not somebody that's in the room. It's the Lord's. It's to be shared. Uh, we could go to extremes with this text and said, you know, they share, all right? Anybody that had needs. Well, how do we know who has what needs? Okay? Where do you define that? Well, if we go back to the text in 1 Timothy chapter 5, it defines who are in need. The widows, the orphans, the ones that do not have a family that they can depend on. I mean, and there's different needs of different kinds. So we have to realize it may be just the need to take them to the doctor, take them shopping, put some food on their, in their refrigerator or in their freezer for future meals as they're going through surgeries or difficult times. There's different needs, different times. So we have to realize in this text that it's the Lord's stuff. It's ours. It's not, God doesn't need this. Our neighbor needs you're, this. You're, you're, you're forgetting one thing that everybody needs. Okay. I haven't got to and, that. And, and, where you're going either. <laughs> because again, you're, you're, you're going the direction I don't want to go. We're well, I'm you're, talking you're, physical right now. Right. I'm not getting into spiritual yet. You got to start with the spiritual. Well, I, I think you've got to, again, you've got, you, 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 now granted, you see what their physical needs are, but you really got to say, okay, where, where is their greatest need? Because even, even the ones that are struggling physically, the greater need is spiritually. Well, I was going to go back and relate how Jesus took care of the crowds. Okay. And I would say, if, if, you got to get this book one at a time because yeah. the author would say he dealt with them spiritually first. He does in some situations. He does, in every situation, he deals with them spiritually first because what does he do? What does he do with them first? He talks to them. Okay. Well, see, 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 well I'm thinking about some of the miracles he did. Well, I understand that, but but, yeah. but but in all those cases, he dealt with them in conversation. He's talking. He's, he, talking he's, he, he, he's, he's already dealing with them spiritually. You know, he, he doesn't just do a random, out of the blue, boom. No. He, he, he talks to them. He addresses them. He, he might not get in the fullness of it, but he's, he's already saying, you're my brother. I, right. Take any, in, in the book, he talks about the lepers. I, I mean, Jesus literally touched the lepers. That 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 would yeah. Uh, that, that's unclean. Uh, yeah. It, but isn't that spiritual? But that's spiritual. It's, it starts with the spiritual. It, it, it's a touch. Yeah, that would be. Spiritual. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's what I'm saying. That, and and that's really where the sermon is going to go. Is don't look at this text and just go okay. And and, and this is sometimes where we we get into a rut at all saints is. You know, we make a collection for this thing, we make a collection for this thing, we make a collection for this thing, but we never engage the people to whom we are collecting it for. Well, that's a problem. But I'm going to say that doing...
And what we're doing is also spiritual because it's being led by the Lord for us to provide for others. But we cannot just provide the physical. Correct. We need to. Hopefully it's being led by God for us doing it. Or, or are, are we. There are some selfish people. Yes. Uh, are, are, are sometimes we, we're doing it because, it because we do. Sometimes we do it because we're, you know, you, you help that person on the street corner. Not because you're drawn to them, but you, you've got this sense of guilt. I need to help him out. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's, and that's, Lord, that's I, that battle. That Lord, we're I, wanna, I wanna feel good about what I did today. Right. Yeah. Right. I wanna, I wanna boast about that. It, right. <laughs> yeah. which, which gets back to the song. Which, you know. Right. Which you and I have had a discussion in the past when, when I've done things for, or other people have done things for people in the congregation. You wanted to know what was going on because you were concerned about that person's care and knowing what's how they're being cared for to make sure that their needs are met both physical and spiritual mm -hmm. but then the others and i struggle with you and all of this i have uh where now what i do is is i do because the lord's leading me to do it right not to be shared and talked about with anybody else that's just don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing thank you jobs <laughs> But exactly. But the text says they they had everything, um, and that means you yeah. should you should be invite you shouldn't be a lone ranger out there. No. You should be inviting others to come with no. you right. no, I, to do these that's things. That's what that text is saying. And, and and by the way, as you pointed out at the start, now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. Whose whose heart and soul were they one in? The Holy Spirit. Christ. Christ. Right. Have this mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. Right. Uh, the, and they were one in that. So, so it's not just we do these things individually, but as we come together as a congregation, we say, how are we ta taking care of these needs, both inside the congregation, but also out in our community? Well, I think this text is more inward. As I read it, I, I may be wrong. But it, it's 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 more of taking those within the body of Christ in our community. <laughs> we, I mean, we need we need to reach out. I'm not disputing right. that at all. But it's a clear to me as to define that if we even can't take care of our brothers and sisters in Christ, correct, we can't take care of anybody. Correct. And if we think we are, we're doing that in vain. And and, and to me, the the emphasis is. Take care so that there's not a needy person among us. The first circle is exactly what you say. The first circle, make sure that there's not a needy person among us. Right. Then the concentric circle is make sure that there's not a needy person among us. Our neighbor. Then the further then we extend it further out. Right. Make sure that there's not a needy person among us. Okay. You know, and, and it's and it's really do we have our eyes open enough noticing the needy people among us? Are, or are we so consumed with ourselves that when, when somebody comes into our midst that we don't even notice that they come in? Mm. That happened. Oh, yeah. That happened. Yeah. I mean, Sunday, right? Right. I mean, we, unknown to me because I didn't see it. I guess there was a lady who came to breakfast, sat by herself. And then went on and stayed in, 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 in worship with us in service. I don't. I was so right. And I was so it, involved with 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 other people that are new to us. And, right. and one of our ladies that came that needed, I thought, some prayer and support. Right. Uh, and just doing those things, I did not take the time to get up and look around in the fellowship hall. But that's what I'm saying. That's why this text in says text, it, it's not it's not dependent upon you or me. It's dependent upon everybody. Everybody. To, to do to, that. To have this. Yeah. That's the title of the sermon, Heart and Soul. Oh, okay. So yeah. most of you think of the piano piece. By the way, <laughs> Hargy, 
Hoagie Carmichael. Dun 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 well, me, myself, and I? Mm -hmm. Okay, me, myself, and I? But if we, <laughs> but if we, have, we have, if we have Christ's heart and soul, you know what it is? It's no longer I human, but Christ is in me, number two. There we go. We're out of time. We're out of time. <laughs> Would you pray for us? <laughs> oh, boy, we need it. We need it. Let's bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. Uh, again, as we gather together, thank you uh, that we have this time to just soak in your word uh, and and again the preparation that it gives us the excitement that it gives us uh, anticipating uh, worship on Sunday so uh, continue to uh, let that live in us so that we can see how we can best live that out as as we have that one mind of Christ as we have his heart and soul in the midst of our congregation uh, so that we can see the ones who are in need among us uh, again, Heavenly Father, guide us and lead us to have open eyes and minds and hearts for those that are in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I would ask for those watching to please join us. Uh, we're here every Wednesday at 10 o'clock at G&G. 9.30. Well, okay. All right. Some of us get here to, so we can eat before we go on camera. <laughs> yeah, and, and actually, we're, we get quite a joy out of being together. Do we? Yeah. We have fun doing this, don't we? We do. Bible study can be fun. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Lord gives us joy. Exactly. Us and our joy would be complete if they showed up. <laughs> there you go. We'll be completer. <laughs> completer. <laughs>